G'day guys, my name's Mark, this is my wife Sharon and our dog Maya. Um, today we're going to be reading from Gospel of Mark, chapters 5 and 6. Take it away. <laughs> Mark chapter 5. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of Gerasenes. And when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him anywhere anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always crying out and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you, my God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion. For we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us to the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs. And the herd, numbering about two thousand, rushed down a steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. The herdsmen fled and told it in the city and in the country, and people came to see what, what, what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus and saw the demon-possessed man, the one who had had the legion sitting there, clothed, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who had seen it described to them what had happened to the demon-possessed man and to the pigs. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might go be with him. And he did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim, proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone marvelled. <coughs> And when Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered about him, and he was beside the sea. Then came one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and seeing him, he fell at his feet and implored him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. And he went with him. And a great crowd followed him, and thronged about him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and who had suffered much under many physicians. And she had spent all that she had, and was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his garment. For she said, If I touch even his garments, I will be made well. And immediately the flow of blood dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus, perce perceiving in himself that power had gone out from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, there came from the ruler's house someone who said, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. And he allowed no one to follow him except for Peter and James and John, the brother of James. They came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and Jesus saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And when he had entered, he said to them, 
Why are you making a commotion and weeping? The child is not dead yet, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But he put them all, put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. Taking her by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, Little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl got up and began walking, for she was twelve years of age. And they were immediately overcome with amazement. And he strictly charged them that no one else should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. <clears throat> Mark chapter 6. He went away from there and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joses, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him, and Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour, except in his hometown and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could, he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marvelled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a star, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent, and they cast out many demons and anointed with many oil many who were sick and healed them. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some said, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. But others said, He is Elijah. And others said, He is a prophet, like the one of the prophets of old. But when Herod had heard it, he said, John, who I am beheaded, has been raised. For it was Herod who had sent and seized John and bound him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother's Philip's wife, because he had married her. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to be put and wanted to put him to death. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he kept him safe. When he had heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he heard him gladly. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his nobles and military commanders and, and the leading men of Galilee. For when Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it to you. And he vowed to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you up to half my kingdom. And she went out and said to her mother, For what should I ask? And she said, the head of John the Baptist. And she came in immediately with haste to the king and asked, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was exceedingly sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he did not want to break his word to her. And immediately the king sent out an executioner with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard of it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. <clears throat> the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught, and he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. 
And when they went away in the boat to, de to a desolate place by themselves, now many saw them going and recognised them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he said he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when, he grew, when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups, of, groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and fifties, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to the heavens and, and said a blessing, and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces of fish, and those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. Immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsiada, where while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had taken leave of them, he went up to the mountain to pray. And when evening came, the boat was out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased. And they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they had come to land, at Gennesaret, and they moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognised him, and ran about the whole region and began to bring sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in, in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched, it were made well. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, um, for this opportunity we have to come together, even if it's not physically, Lord. Um, yeah, that we're able to read your gospel with a community. Um, and yeah, I just thank you that even in the times that are at the moment, that they're a little bit hard, that we still can meet together as a church, Lord. Um, it's just amazing. And I just thank you for what we have been reading um, and that we've just been able to learn so much about Jesus and, um, and what he's done and his character and the way that he just cares and loves people, Lord, and that we will just learn so much about who you are from that, Lord, and that would help us grow to be more like you, God. Yeah, I just pray that you would bless us with these, um, with your word and, yeah, just continue to grow us um, in the next few weeks, Lord. In your name, amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks for listening. See you tomorrow for the next reading. That was Mark chapters 5 and 6 from the English Standard Version.